ever been in this situation? <laughs> You're trying to solve a problem and working on creating a clever solution. You have all of the knowledge and gathered all of the requirements and materials needed. And it's time to come up with an idea. But you're stuck. Has that ever happened to you? Think back about a recent situation through which you wanted to, you wanted to come up with a creative solution. And you felt stuck. What stopped you from coming up with that solution? Aren't you creative enough? As a graduate student, the last time I got stuck was when my professor asked us to design a model to represent the concept of the politicization of the curriculum. I learned quite a lot, and I understood the concept very well. Yet, coming up with that solution, with the model, and turning the abstract into concrete was really the hardest task. Many teachers and I spend quite a good time on the web looking for resources. Who doesn't? We look for worksheets, visual aids, YouTube videos, texts, and so many other resources. Again, we get stuck when what we find on the web does not match what our learners need. Actually, we're not the ones to be blamed for being not creative because we grew to consume content from textbooks rather than create our own. The 20th century was the century of introspection. It was the era in which we were told that the best way to discover who you are and what to do with your lives is to step inside yourselves. On the other hand, the 21st century is the century of introspection, which is the concept of stepping outside the self to discover the lives and the needs of other people. Therefore, the purpose of education has changed. In the past, the purpose of education was academic excellence, very egocentric. Nowadays, the purpose of education has become to use all of the knowledge and understanding that we construct throughout our education to serve others and make or improve humanity. This lofty purpose couldn't be achieved unless we nurture and develop creativity, confidence, collaboration, and empathy among the learners. By a raise of hands, who here believes that schools are successfully working towards this end? What do you think? Are they? In certain places and instances, don't you think that so many learning environments and processes are still exactly the same as those of the 20th century. Here is a, school, is a, here is a typical school picture of a classroom 50 years ago. And here is another picture showing a school classroom nowadays. Notice any differences other than colors? Because I can't. Unfortunately, many teachers of today are still teaching the same way they've been taught yesterday, and they're failing to nurture creativity among their children. Students nowadays have become standardized to think within educational bounds. And instead of exercising their imagination and boosting their confidence, they're just studying and learning for a test. How creative did the test make you? How confident. The point that I'd like to make right here is that both the teacher and the student who are not creative nowadays in the 21st century are endangered and could be easily be replaced by machines, by YouTube videos, if not today, in the very near future. I'd like to invite you to think back to a time when you were immersed in deep and authentic learning. Maybe you're recalling a time when you were able to solve a problem, changing a tire to continue a trip, or maybe a time when you did not give up until you mastered a new skill. The sad truth about all of the learning moments you're thinking about, and which, through which creativity grows, is that they take place outside the school. How many people have told you that work is true learning? And how many of you 
believe and think that there are so many theories in our education system than practice and performance? And how many of you believe that the BA has no longer become the passing ticket for a job? I know a lot of BA holders without a job, and they're good people. Maybe they're not creative, but they're good. Do you know any? The question that we have to raise right here for ourselves and for everyone is that how could we adjust our approaches to teaching and learning so that we bridge the gap between theory and practice? Nurture further creativity. Go beyond the test to assess learning. There's some good news about all of this and creativity could be made happen in our curricula. We can nurture it. It's not something innate. This creativity could be nurtured throughout an approach called design thinking. It might be hard to put it in words, but if we'd like to define it, we could say that design thinking is a human-centered problem-solving approach with an emphasis on empathy, creativity, and confidence. Actually, design thinking, if we want to think about it, and before we think about anything else, I'd like just to ask you, no matter what your profession is, no matter what you do for a living, don't you think of yourselves as designers, change agents, problem solvers? Actually, innovation, which is an end result in education, is not a momentary event. It is a design thinking process. And here it is. This process starts with empathy. It allows the students to empathize with others, just as designers put themselves in the user's shoes. Whether you want to design a phone, a table, or a chair, aren't you going to think about the user's needs? So, students will empathize first, and afterwards, they're going to conduct the research through different channels of communication and collaboration. And based on the data collected, they're going to be able to define the problem, the existing problem, with the why elements in mind. They understand the why behind it. This empathy and this understanding of the problem will urge the students to ideate and brainstorm as many solutions as possible. And here, creativity lies. Ideating solutions is not enough. They have to change their ideas into something tangible, something concrete. Here, they prototype their solutions. They try to create a model out of it. And in this phase, they seek feedback from peers and from their teachers. And here, they learn, as in good businesses, it's better to fail early and often. We do learn from what doesn't work rather than from what works. They learn from their mistakes. After prototyping their solutions and asking for feedback, they're going to refine their products and test them. And here is an authentic assessment of learning. Throughout this process through which mistakes are welcomed, not stigmatized, the students are going to gain enough creative confidence to stand out for the job market afterwards. You might be wondering why we should implement design thinking in our curricula. Design thinking promotes students' engagement because the students are going to feel more connected. It's overlaid with a strong feeling, which is empathy. They're gonna feel with others. Besides, it increases achievement because it fosters a meaningful action for an existing problem. Throughout the process, the students are going to gain and develop entrepreneurship skills. So it leads to success after school. And in all, the, the learning process or the whole design thinking process is going to empower the students with the needed creativity and confidence so that they stand out in the job market after. So this is actually what businesses want. Actually, now I'm going to share with you a learning story which took place at Rafi Hariri High School in Saida. Our students constructed their own understanding of different energy forms, their consumption, and how they transformed from one form to another. They were concerned 
with how energy usage impacts the environment and the people living in it. We, as teachers or instructional designers, were concerned to create a hands-on and a minds-on learning experience our students would never forget. So, we implemented the design thinking process and the first thing that we did is to arouse a strong feeling of empathy. We wanted the students to feel with the environment, so we engaged them in contrasting their needs with the environment's needs. And after constructing or making this connection with the environment, the students went for a research. Our issue was climate change and the purpose behind the unit was to rethink the way we use energy, especially right here in Lebanon, through design to create better places afterwards, to improve humanity. So through different or based on different research data and based on observation and based on field trips and interviews, the students were able to define the issue. They tried to put it in their own words showing an understanding of the environment and its needs and its users at the same time. They were aware of how important to redesign the existing way we use energy. They ideated and they brainstormed a lot of solutions, yet we wanted our learning to be concrete, hands-on. So the authenticity of assessment lies in performance and in practice. So the students were tasked to redesign different objects and places existing nowadays. And look what they did. They prototyped a green school. They prototyped a smart house. They prototyped a, digi a digital classroom. They prototyped a green city. All of their products were a hint for a better future, a better success, a generation that is going to take the environment into consideration. During all of this, during all of the process, the students were able to take actions, authentic actions. Some of them started turning off the lights, hinting at like a future or a new designs of existing objects nowadays. It was really beautiful. Actually, because it is a powerful tool for bridging the gap between education and real life, design thinking process is being implemented all around the world. And as you can notice, it's not still implemented in Lebanon. However, it is mainly implemented in the States and in Europe. Uh, because actually, nowadays, we are in need for more people who are really creative. Don't you agree that we must redesign the traditional, the traditional approaches to learning? And implementing design thinking process in our curricula is a good way to make this connection and bridge the gap between education and real life. Design thinking is a human-centered and an action-oriented approach. And we need to create, actually, schools with further empathy, with more creative people, enough standardized tests and textbooks. The time has come to make the change and the time has come to nurture creativity and out-of-the-box thinking. Are you ready to be this change? Thank you very much.